Hey guys, welcome in that video tutorial about how to convert characters from Character Creator to Golem. So right now I'm go I'm running uh, Golem 7.3.1, and uh, this is a character I've been exporting from Character Creator. Uh, but maybe before jumping into Golem, let's jump into Character Creator and see how I ended up there. So um, Character Creator is a, a re-illusion software. Um, it's not uh, free, but uh, here I downloaded the 30 days trial, which allow uh, to export up to 10 FBX characters. Uh, it's not free, but it's not really expensive neither. So if you're looking for high quality characters, that's probably a good way to get started with. Uh, it provides plenty of uh, different characters and uh, plenty of different variations on uh, on um, shapes, on type of characters, on clothes. So here what I did is I just took one of the characters from uh, the templates and uh, before exporting it, one thing I would like to do is to change the pose. Um, right now the character is in T-pose and um, it's not exactly perfect for what we need. Uh, we would like to have um, limbs which are not fully extended. So that will be like easier for uh, the software to figure um, where are the pole vectors. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go into uh, uh, the um, uh, pose uh, tab here, go into the body tab and there there's a couple of presets uh, that, that you can apply. So there's an A pose, T pose. Uh, idle pose. So I'm gonna go with uh, idle pose. That's the one I've been uh, tested, and you can see that uh, the fingers are not a bit relaxed, uh, as well as the arms, as well as the legs. So that will be way easier now to figure um, uh, pull vectors. So then I just uh, went into file export, export close character. Uh, yeah, I'm within the trial here, so I'm gonna say okay. Um, I want to export this for Maya. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm exporting mesh and motion. That pose I've been applying to the character has been considered as a motion here. Um, yeah, sure, I want to embed textures. Uh, the frame rate, probably I would love to change that to uh, 24. Um, and uh, what I want to export is the current pose. And uh, it's really up to you here, would you like to delete uh, hidden faces? I would advise to keep them because uh, one of the cool point about uh, character creator is that you can generate multiple times the same multiple times the same character with different assets, different props, and you can re-import those props within Maya and make variation within Golem with those props. And uh, here, if you delete hidden faces, you may uh, remove the legs. Uh, you may remove the arms and at some point, uh, the upper arms I mean, at some point if your characters have short pants instead of length pants, if you don't have the legs anymore, mesh geometry, uh, you won't be able to actually put short pants and uh, and see the actual body geometry uh, laying under. So here I just exported, um, I won't do it here, I already exported it. And um, I re-imported that character within uh, within Golem, so um, I'm actually good to go and good to get started with that. So let's take a look at my character. It has a skeleton here. Um, my scene is set up to 60 FPS, probably because at the time when I exported that FPX, I didn't change this. So let's go back to 24 and let's add a couple of more frames. And uh, and uh, let's start converting the character. So let's go into the golem shelf, open the character maker here. And um, to start, usually um, you got that message which says uh, load either a character file, so we don't have it, so we want to make one actually, or a skeleton from Maya, so that's what we, ha what we have. So I'm gonna select here the root bone of the character and the uh, button which is available is load selected skeleton. So by the way, I'm in the character tab here, skeleton set part, so I'm uh, converting the skeleton part of that character. So it says that the segment scale compensate option for some joints uh, is enabled and it's not supported by Golem. Uh, we'd like to turn that off on uh, those joints, so I'm gonna say yes. So segment scale compensate just for the uh, just for the sake of it is uh, uh, this option here. So it just means that if uh, the root, well, if the parent bone of that joint scales. If this is enabled, that joint won't scale. So that basically means that if I scale the root, uh, none of the bone will scale. 
And that's not exactly what we don't want because within Golem, we actually want to be able to have one bone which is able to control everything. So we're going to turn that off. Uh, it's not going to affect anything within the viewport. It's just turning that option off. And as soon as now, I'm going to scale that root bone. It's going to scale everything properly and I'll have my characters following. Then it's, um, as soon as I loaded my skeleton, it's asking me what's the up axis and the front axis. So um, Y up, Z front are good. And it's showing me uh, that character maker locator, uh, which is supposed to be the T pose of my character. So that's that, uh, let's um, uh, maybe increase the size of the bones. So it's uh, more obvious that those are bones. So that's uh, what's been detected as a T pose by default. So you can tell this is not correct. Um, this is not correct because by default, Golem looks at a joint orient data. In joint orient, once again, if you take a look within the bones, this is what's written here. Most of the time, uh, riggers tend to put uh, T pose data into joint orient. Um, that happens sometimes that uh, those values are not valid, so not really, not really uh, a big matter here. So we can change the mode here. Uh, maybe we can try and bind pose, so it just tells what. Uh, what's the position of the skeleton in which the geometry has been scanned so here as well it's not re really making a good job uh, and finally the last mode uh, is going to be current values so current values is just looking at what's the current values within the viewport and uh, if we move that locator slightly now we can see that it's actually following exactly the joints uh, from the character so we are pretty good with that um, then we want to define how does the skeleton looks like so as the character is a bipedal uh, character we can probably use the auto compute skeleton mapping and see what's going on and fix what needs to be fixed so um, here it just analyze uh, the different um, hierarchy relationships between the bones uh, maybe sy symmetry uh, within the character and tries to figure what is what um, and at the end it creates that uh, graph there so it's not really looking uh, like a bipedal character there's some arms which are um, at the bottom there's a multiple spine node uh, there's some uh, the rib bones as well has been detected because my character i'm not sure if you noticed but it has some uh, rib uh, controllers on the chest as well um, so here what i would like to have is um is to map only the bones which are going to be animated. So first thing is, well, those ribs stuff, um, I don't have any animation which uh, actually controls them. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to get rid of those. Uh, I don't really care about those. So let's remove the, those rib uh, connections. So they're still into the hierarchy, uh, but they're not, just not going to be mapped, which is they're not going to be animated uh, by Golem. And uh, then let's figure that double spine stuff. So um, the root bone has been considered as the hip. So sounds good to me. So we got uh, on the skeleton, we got a bone root, which is a floor reference bone, uh, which is controlling the overall position. Uh, what will be the, the hips or the pelvis of the character will be the hip bone. So we are actually good with that. Then after that we got okay that's the that's the issue here so we got a pelvis bone to which is connected the legs and we got a waist bone to which are connected the arms so it's pretty well I'm not gonna say unusual but we haven't seen that uh, often so it means that the hip and the pelvis there are at the same position so yeah I don't really want to mess up here so. Uh, that pelvis bone is kind of a duplicate bone here if I animate the hips that will animate the pelvis the same way so I can skip uh, that node here so probably yeah that spine node here which is connected to the legs uh, it's it's mapping the pelvis and um, you know what I don't really need that pelvis here so I'm just gonna like uh, uh, take that node and remove it and uh, instead I'm gonna connect directly uh, my leg uh, my leg nodes. Oh, I'm gonna auto reorganize everything here. So yeah, that looks better. So I'm having my left leg here, my right leg there, and uh, okay, that's way more casual. And now I expect this to look like something which will work properly. Um, then uh, once I'm happy with the mapping uh, and the way um, it looks into the graph, 
I just want to make sure that all my pull vectors are proper. Um, so on my arms they are, on my fingers they're pretty nice because the fingers are relaxed. So we could extract easily uh, the direction of the pull vectors. And there's an issue with the spine because the spine is actually relaxed forward in the way the characters has been made. Um, and now Golem is considering that your spine is going to be falling into uh, the uh, opposite direction where it should. So let's go into that spine orange spine node and maybe uh, to clear the view a bit, let's go into the character maker, uh, remove the show ragdoll volume. So now I can concentrate only on bones. And okay, now I'm having that orange limb, which is not falling into the right direction. So I'm gonna go into my orange node and uh, I'm gonna change here the value of um, my um, pull vector plane. So um, here I'm just changing between x, y, z, minus x, minus y, minus z. So actually x was exactly what I was looking for. So now my um, my spine is falling into the uh, opposite direction. So oh good, I'm uh, quite happy with that. Uh, the neck is fine, that's the, um, the mouth probably. So well, I don't really care about those. And uh, okay, this is where I care more. Um, here, the detection of the uh, legs didn't happen properly. Uh, it's saying that the legs are made of two Aiki chain, one which go from here to the knee, and one which go from the knee to the end of the foot, where your legs should be more. The Aiki goes from um, the upper leg here to the ankle, this is like a chain. So you got your uh, upper leg uh, and, uh, and your knee, which is falling. So this is like where your eye key is. And then the foot is uh, another node if you want to map it. So I would have to maybe like remap do. So I'm gonna go into the left leg. I'm gonna unmap all the nodes because the yellow part is not what I need. Uh, neither is uh, the green part. So I'm going to say that my red leg, it goes from the right uh, upper leg tight and it goes until the foot. And now you can see that your eye key goes from here to there and it falls into that direction, which is exactly what I would need it. And um, I'm going to do something uh, similar to the uh, uh, left leg as well. So I'm going to unmap everything. Oops, that's not the pelvis I want to unmap. So I want to map the uh, left upper leg here until the left foot. Okay, and that's great. And what I could do from here, it's actually to save that file as a template. So it could be my uh, character creator template, which means that anytime you're gonna export a character from uh, a character creator, um, they all have the same uh, uh, skeleton topology. Uh, which is really good, which means that if you take um, the woman character or any other kind of character they have, you always end up with the same skeleton, which means you will always end up with the same mapping. So instead of redoing that file, what those manipulation have just did again and again and again, what we can do is just um, uh, save them into a template file. And let's say I'm, uh, let's say I'm uh, recreating, maybe I can uh, close this. Let's say you reopen another character, you make another character. Let's pretend this is a character we've never seen before, but it has the same skeleton. What we can do is we can use that template first and use that to make a new character. So uh, first I load the template. I'm probably gonna save it as a character creator mail car. Let's overwrite that file. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna take that skeleton again and uh, I'm gonna press load selected skeleton. And now as uh, there's a file already loaded, Golem will detect that and will ask you, would you like to use that character file you just did and remap that skeleton on that character file. So all the work you did, would you like to take advantage of it? And if yes, would you like to map uh, that character file and your skeleton with name? So it's gonna look at all uh, bone names and is those are similar. Uh, exactly similar, they will be assigned to each other. Um, if names do not match, but maybe because you've got namespace, you can use bone IDs, so it will look at bones in the same order uh, than uh, they um, are within the character file and within the skeleton, 
or maybe you don't want to use that character file as a source as a template and you want to create a completely new mapping so up to you um, I usually go with uh, remap by bone ID and uh, once again I need to specify hop access and front access and I'm good now the two are maps and I can keep working so uh, my character has been saved as a separate file so my template now exists and anytime I'm adding a character creator uh, character I can use this as a template even if the size of the bones are different uh, as soon as the hierarchy is similar you're good to go um, okay it's pretty nice the character comes with blend shapes also as well you can see there are plenty of shapes here in 2d outliner uh, and the right uh, the good I the good news is that those blend shapes get uh, recorded so for every single blend shape we're having um, they get assigned with an ID within the blend shape panel uh, and if they're not here, all of them, you just select your blend shape nodes and press plus and uh, it's going to look at all the blend shapes linked to it and uh, add them to the list. But here, they're all here, so I'm all good. So, okay, my character is actually here. It's uh, already valid. Uh, one uh, thing I'd like to do is to check uh, how it folds. So I can use the check buttons to simulate folding of the limbs. So we just shorter and then we can see how the high key is solving. Uh, you can stop this uh, by yourself and uh, change the slider value up to you. I'm not going to do any physics on the, with that character, so I'm just going to skip with the physics properties. And uh, apart from that, I'm, I'm kind of good to go. So I'm going to save that file uh, as a male character, as I said. And uh, one thing I usually um, like to do is uh, at the same time within my scene, I, I like to make a, a quick simulation just to check that uh, what I'm doing is, is proper. Uh, so what I'm going to do is creating an entity type in which I'm going to load my character file I just created. So it's just a skeleton for now. So I'll only be able to see it as a skeleton. Um, I want to change my unit here. My character is in centimeters. You can see the grid, uh, the default my grid here, which is really small. So one grid. Uh, square here is one centimeters so I want to say to golem which is defaulting to uh, meter uh, that's it. it's going to be centimeters which means that when I'm going to create a population tool it will have the proper uh, size here so I want to make a one by one grid oriented the same way that my character and uh, press create here and uh, if I do that and run the simulation I end up with my skeleton uh, which is a bit shorter than my casual character because I'm adding some random scale variation here so let's remove those uh, okay and uh, maybe let's apply motion to see if uh, uh, we did everything properly so let's play maybe one motion from the character pack um, I can probably figure those into motions yeah no. so um, those are motions I don't even know um, what's the rig uh, which has been used i don't even know how many bones were used here uh, and i don't care because uh, uh, i'm going to take advantage of the retargeting system here to see if uh, my characters get animated properly uh, let's it make it on spot so i'm going to edit uh, the motion clip here and uh, break the connection to the offset and remove the offsets so i'm saying that my motion clip plays my posture but uh, i don't have any root translation and uh, well, from a skeleton point of view here, that's an animation from the character pack. So uh, that skeleton here, we didn't know it before and those motions have been converted and we're just applying motions to those characters. So that's the really nice part about the retargeting here. Um, so what about geometry now? So we've been doing skeletons, so we're, we're good with that. Let's switch to geometry. So my character here don't have much variation, so I won't be able to match too much groups and, and asset variation there. But I w as I was saying, it's really up to you here to export multiple characters, multiple times the same character with different props. Uh, they they get adapted to the new morphology if you change morphology. So it's really nice piece of software here, uh, which you could take advantage and make your crowd really easily with this. So um, I'm just gonna uh, use the basic meshes I'm having. So the body, the eye, uh, shirt, jeans, hair, uh, teeth and tongue, up to me if I want to remove those or not. Uh, select them all and, um, and uh, press the import uh, geometry here. So it's looking at all the geometries, all the shading groups and uh, assigning to your groups. I'm not gonna say it's a variation. If I do that, uh, my characters will be made of only on one of those meshes. And obviously I want my characters to be made of all those meshes. 
Um, and final step is here, this is just storing the name of my geometries and my skeletons. So uh, I want to actually export that geometry into a file. Um, also a nice thing about uh, Character Creator is that you can use uh, install LOD to uh, um, make um, some uh, LOD variation of your character. So you may want to make multiple variations of your uh, geometry and definition. Here my character is 44,000, but you can have a, a less defined character or more defined character. And you may want to attach different uh, geometry to that character file. So uh, this is where it's going to happen here. Um, so here I'm just saying I want to export all those geometries here, the skinning weights, uh, the UVs, the vertices, the faces into a uh, file format. So you've got two choices. You can use either the GCG, which stands for Golem uh, Character Geometry File, which is our home proprietary file format, uh, which is super efficient, multi-threaded, but don't support like every, every, everything. We support, um, for that character that's gonna work well, we support, you know, all the skinning and casual stuff. Uh, alternative, if you're if um, what's it within your character is not supported by GCG, is to use FBX, uh, which is going to be less efficient uh, because it won't be multi-threaded. So uh, tend to uh, make it work with GCG if you can. Uh, if you can't, uh, FBX still works, but uh, less efficient. So here I'm going to use the GCG file format, and I'm going to say I want to export uh, override that file there. So it's going to exporting the full geometry with skinning and it's going to take a couple of seconds. And when it's done, uh, you can see that the geo icon here is now um, um, uh, brighting up. Uh, you can have uh, also the bounding box of the character appearing. And if you just unselect that node, uh, that just uh, removes the bounding box. And uh, save that file again because it has stored the name of the geometry file. And uh, now if I run my simulation, and uh, maybe I turn the render previews on before, so it means that the display won't be animation bones anymore. It will now be the geometry. So we're gonna load the geometry um, on the GPU. So that's why it's taking a couple of seconds there. And uh, when it's done, now you can see your character's uh, full geometry uh, moving and uh, being textures. So that's the GPU display. Obviously, uh, you would have to export uh, your simulation to get the alpha. Uh, properly rendered, but um, well, that that's uh, pretty uh, good to start with. So um, yeah, that was uh, that was it. If you got uh, questions, uh, feel free to uh, get in touch uh, from uh, support.golem.com, and uh, see you into the next video.